Are Paramount Plus and Peacock merging, and what does the future of streaming sports look like? Today on the Saturday stream, these are the topics I'm going to cover, along with the top movies and shows on the streaming charts at the end of this video. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them as I'm going along. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and talk about Paramount Plus and Peacock. Now, yesterday, this was actually reported by the Wall Street Journal that the parent companies of, Par of uh, Paramount Plus and Peacock held discussions on potentially merging their streaming services together. That would be, in this case, NBC Universal, aka Comcast, and Paramount Global. Now, it's sounding like these discussions weren't necessarily about merging their companies all together. Um, that would provide some regulatory challenges, from my understanding, because NBC Universal owns NBC, Paramount owns CBS, and regulators have historically had issues with the uh, companies that own the broadcasters merging together. Uh, this would be narrowly focused on their streaming services combining. Um, you know, it is an interesting time for Paramount, to say the least. Um, but this actually would not be the first time that NBC Universal and Paramount have worked together on a joint television service. Um, in Europe, they have what's called Sky Showtime, and that is also a joint venture between Paramount Plus, or actually Paramount Global, rather, and Comcast. Um, if you look at their subscriber numbers, Peacock has 31 million subscribers. Paramount Plus has 63 million, uh, you know, going against Netflix that has 260 million subscribers altogether. They still have far fewer in comparison, but they would at least be inching up a little bit to combine their forces together if they did have that consolidated streaming service. Um, now, if you weren't aware, with Paramount, lots of things are going on behind the scenes. Um, if you're someone like me that's very interested in the television industry, uh, watching this has really been interesting. I made a, an entire video about the situation at Paramount. If you want to check that out, you can. Um, but essentially, the company that owns a controlling stake in Paramount has put the company up for sale. Um, they've held discussions with companies ranging from Warner Brothers Discovery to um, Skydance Media. Uh, there was also a bid offer they received um, from the man um, named Byron Allen. I wasn't familiar with him, but apparently he was a stand-up comedian in like the 80s and 90s, and now he's this big media mogul. Very curious about that career trajectory. I uh, found that interesting. But um, yeah, so they're trying to sell Paramount, um, and that's just because of different, you know, challenges going on in the marketplace with movie theaters and streaming and all of that. Um, in anticipation of that potential sale, this past week, um, they unfortunately laid off 800 employees at Paramount. They also shut out, uh, <clears throat> also shut down their children's service, known as Noggin. Um, this was basically kind of like a spinoff of Nickelodeon um, that eventually, you know, it was originally it was, I, I think, geared towards younger kids, kind of like Nick Jr., and it kind of morphed into an educational children's outlet. Um, they are getting rid of that, um, so kind of slimming down their operations. So I think this potential merger with their streaming service with Peacock would be part of that. Um, but based on the reporting, it doesn't look like there is anything set in place. Um, they're not anticipating some kind of deal is going to be announced within days. Uh, it sounds like these were just kind of preliminary discussions. Um, now, this past week, if you were living under a rock, the Super Bowl did occur, and this was on one of Paramount's properties they own, which is CBS. Um, you know, as expected, basically year over year, the Super Bowl telecast consistently breaks the record for the most watched telecast ever in television history. And that's because it's the one thing in American culture, really, that people still all watch at the same time. That's a really rare thing that we, we don't really see anymore. Um, and because of, you know, accounting for population increase, basically year over year, everyone watches the same thing, the population grows, and as a result, it breaks the record for the most people watching stuff. Um, we have the numbers from Paramount. This year, there were 123.7 million viewers. That's the adjusted numbers that came in from Nielsen. Uh, that breaks the record for the most watched television broadcast of all time. 
Um, and now what's interesting about this, it was on Paramount Plus and Paramount Plus in their press release over this, I'll just read you exactly what they said. They said, um, you know, Super Bowl is the most watched Super Bowl in history led by a record setting audience on Paramount Plus. Now, notice they didn't say the number of people who watched on Paramount Plus. So that raises a lot of questions for me. Um, there were a lot of different options to stream and watch the Super Bowl, as I made multiple videos about. Um, you could watch it on Nickelodeon, you could watch it on CBS, you could watch it with Paramount Plus, you could watch it with YouTube TV, with an antenna, with, you know, all kinds of different ways with cable. Um, so we don't know exactly among that 123.7 million people how many of those millions were watching on Paramount+. Plus. I'm guessing <laughs> there was something about that number that made them not want to say it publicly. Um, even if it was a large number and even if it was a record-setting audience for Paramount+. Plus, um, I'm, I'm just very curious why they didn't say that exact number. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is just overall we are seeing that for Peacock and for Paramount+, Plus, sports are a very important thing of both of those streaming services. Uh, with Peacock, um, back in January, they had a Peacock exclusive playoffs game, which got, I believe, 23 million people tuned in for that. Um, so, you know, with their forces combined together, that would actually make for a very robust uh, sports streaming service, which brings me to my next story. This actually happened uh, a little bit before the Super Bowl. This, this story broke that Warner Brothers Discovery, Fox, and Disney will launch a new streaming service aimed at sports by the end of 2024, so sometime around the fall. Um, this will include live channels from ESPN, Fox, ABC, TNT, True TV, TBS, and FS1. Now, altogether, it's estimated this will have about 60 to 85% of Major League Sports will be covered with this streaming service, which is a lot, but it's not all. Um, it is notably missing CBS and NBC and the sports on there, uh, which would be covered on that merge streaming service if they do decide to do that with Paramount Plus and Peacock. So I think the announcement of this a few days, well, probably about a week after that first story, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think Paramount Plus and Peacock and the people behind those streaming services are looking at ways that they could potentially compete with this other sports streaming service that doesn't include their properties. So this sports streaming service would not include the sports from CBS and NBC. Um, it is also notable it wouldn't include uh, the sports from, you know, with YouTube, with NFL Sunday Ticket, as well as Amazon. They have the rights to Thursday Night Football. It's also been announced that just as this past season, there was a playoffs game that was exclusive to Peacock. Next season, there will be a playoff game that's exclusive to Amazon. And this is a, also isn't even factoring in the regional sports networks, which are their own kind of mess, and some of those are actually going over to Amazon too. Um, so this new sports streaming service, I do think it's really interesting on a couple different points. Number one, you have rival companies working together and consolidating into a streaming service. So... Historically, that hasn't always worked out well. Um, we saw with the original form of Hulu, it was a joint venture between different companies, and they all had kind of their own directions, and eventually Disney just got 100% of it. Um, so we'll see if this shakes out. Um, but it is also something that seems to be addressing a problem, which is the issue of streaming sports being in different places. This is supposed to combine them together. But it also doesn't cover it at 100%. It's still going to be somewhat complicated for sports fans to stream, and they're going to have to go in different places. Now, we don't have the pricing just yet, but estimates that I've seen from different experts in the industry have estimated it could be anywhere from 30 bucks a month to $50 a month, which still isn't something to sneeze at, but it is a little bit cheaper than YouTube TV or Hulu Plus Live TV. Kind of puts it on par with something like Sling. Um, so, you know, but if you're also considering the price of this plus Amazon Prime plus the other things that you would need like Paramount Plus and Peacock to watch all of the sports together, it would still end up being pretty pricey. Um, they are going to have some bundle options together with Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max. 
And interestingly enough, this is actually separate from Disney's ESPN app that they're launching in 2025 that will be kind of like a more souped up, full-fledged version of ESPN uh, compared to what you currently get with ESPN+. Plus. So with Disney, they have kind of like multi-pronged things going on here. They have Hulu plus live TV, which it seems like they are not very invested in now that, you know, they own 100% of Hulu. They don't have Comcast in the mix with that ownership stake in Hulu. Um, it seems like as they merge Hulu together with Disney Plus, I really feel like Hulu plus live TV is going to be something that eventually they will just you know, disband altogether. That, that's personally what I think. I think that's what I've heard from some other TV insiders. Um, and when asked about it in a press conference, Bob Iger, he also didn't seem very enthousi enthusiastic about Hulu Plus Live TV recently. So um, with them getting into this new sports streaming service, it sounds like, you know, they are trying out new things and going in a different direction with their sports streaming. Um, I, one interesting thing about this, okay, so you know, you have to consider companies like Warner Brothers Discovery, companies like Disney that are involved in this new sports streaming service. One really big part of their television business is distributing the channels that they have to, you know, still to cable, to satellite, also to places like YouTube TV or Hulu Plus Live TV. So that business depends on them not cannibalizing their existing businesses, and it will be a question over whether or not this will eat into that. Um, Bob Iger essentially said that their target audience is cord nevers rather than cord cutters. So they're not trying to get people to switch from cable to this new sports streaming service, but rather they're trying to find that younger audience that maybe primarily watches TV through Netflix or Disney+. Plus. They never have subscribed to cable, they don't plan to subscribe to cable, but they are interested in watching live sports, and this will be essentially their way to do that. Um, so I would anticipate the marketing for the streaming service is going to be a lot different than what we see for something like YouTube TV. Um, they're going to not be contrasting it with cable because that's not the audience they're going after. Also anticipate some kind of like flashy marketing that really seems to be aimed at Gen Z and millennials. Um, you'll probably see some marketing through TikTok and Twitch and things like that. Now, there are some people that are not happy about this new sports streaming service, including the competitors to this potential sports streaming service, such as Fubo. They released a statement essentially saying that it raises regulatory questions. Um, and I do think that it is fair because in this situation, you essentially have these companies like Warner Brothers Discovery and Fox and Disney that own the channels and the content being produced for those channels. And they're also going to own, in this case, the distribution method for those channels. Um, so you've got vertical integration going on. Now, I'm not an expert in antitrust legislation. Um, looking at the industry, there are already examples where this happens. You have Comcast that owns NBC Universal. You have Disney that owns uh, Hulu Plus Live TV. Um, I do think this potentially raises an unfair advantage for this handful of companies. And in the case of live TV streaming services, there's outside players that aren't connected to like the big five media companies like Fubo or Vidgo. Um, that company is basically like dead. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it creates this environment where it becomes very hard for them even to exist as a business unless you're connected to Disney or Paramount or Warner Brothers Discovery so or Amazon. Um, so, it, it, you know, it'll just be interesting. And not only has that concern been raised by Fubo, it apparently has also been raised by the Department of Justice. They are investigating this potential deal um, and have basically said that they will, there will be close scrutiny over the final contract. So we'll see how this shakes out. Um, personally, I don't think this investigation is going to lead to anything. If Comcast can own NBC Universal, why can't Disney own, you know, in part with Warner Brothers Discovery and Fox, the sports streaming service? Um, so we'll see what happens. I will definitely be covering this on this YouTube channel as time goes on. I'm sure once it launches, I will try it out and talk about it as well. So let's get on to the streaming charts. Um, these come from Nielsen, and they are the top movies and shows on streaming. 
Now, with their charts, these are delayed by a few weeks. Um, so take note that this is from the week of January 15th through the 21st. Um, but this is the most recent data that we have from Nielsen as far as the most viewed um, movies and TV shows in the United States. So first up, we've got movies. Um, here, looking at that week of January 15th through 21st, we say at number one, we have Lift. Now, this was a film, um, comedy film with Kevin Hart. It did not receive good reviews, but yet it did very well on the streaming charts. Um, just kind of goes to show you, it, you know, pretty much if it's on Netflix, people are going to watch it. It doesn't have to be critically acclaimed. It doesn't have to be Oscar winning. People are going to watch that movie. And quite a few people watched, watched Lift when it first came out. Um, we've got The Legend of Tarzan at number two. Now, this is an example of a movie that really, you know, found a second life on Netflix. Uh, when it came out in 2016, I looked it up. It just basically just broke even at the box office. It had mixed reviews from critics. You're seeing here it's taken off number two on Netflix. Number three, we've got Super Mario Brothers movie. Another one that that movie had, you know, obviously it did great at the box office and the theaters. Um, it did pretty well on Peacock too, but it did really, really well when it went on Netflix. Number four, Killers of the Flower Moon on Apple TV+. Plus. This was actually right before it first, um, you know, premiered for the Apple TV Plus subscribers that hadn't specifically purchased that movie. Um, so you see you've got it at number, at number four. Um, now, an interesting thing about this movie, if you've seen it, you know it's a three and a half hour film. And what determines what gets on this list is the number of minutes viewed. So it actually benefits Killers of the Flower Moon in this case to be a longer film. And I wonder if other, you know, streaming services and other production companies will look at the length of their movie as kind of a potentially positive thing, you know, based on these charts. At number five, you've got Netflix's, um, well, not Netflix's movie, but you've got Queen Pins on Netflix. Another film, this came out from Paramount in 2021. It was on Paramount Plus for a while. I think it did okay, but now look at the audience it's found on Netflix. And then uh, Prime Video, we've got two entries on the list, Roleplay and Fast X, and then The Equalizer, Queen Bees, and Society of the Snow from Netflix. So we're seeing here, Netflix is continuing to dominate this chart. Um, not any surprise there. Um, one thing we've, you know, I think you should... Uh, have realized by now if you've uh, tracked anything with Netflix is that if you want people to watch your movies, put it on Netflix. So for TV shows, we've got Reacher at uh, number one. Um, these are the original TV shows, by the way, not just the acquired ones. Um, we've got American Nightmare. This had just three episodes, but a lot of people apparently watched it at number two. Fool Me Once from Netflix at number three. Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is the sole entry from Disney Plus on this list. Uh, the Brother's Son from Netflix. Boy Swallows Universe. And then we have two entries from Peacock. Now, this is interesting here because consider this was from January, the week of January 15th. That was right when Peacock had their playoff exclusive game. Now, Peacock rarely has any shows on this list, so this was kind of the afterglow of all of those people that signed up for Peacock so they could watch that game, and it turns out they did stick around and watch some shows, enough that it got them on this list. We've got Ted, um, you know, based on the movie with Mark Wahlberg, and we've got The Traitors, that uh, reality show. Then at number nine, we've got uh, The Bear on Hulu and The Crown on Netflix, so Anyway, um, just kind of an interesting thing to look at. I always like to see these charts um, and see how these streaming wars are playing out. So this is what's going on in the world of streaming. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. This video is basically a new thing I'm trying out. Eventually, I do want to do these videos live. Uh, just kind of talking about the different things going on in the world of streaming and TV. So if you liked this video, make sure to give a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay up to date with all things streaming. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.